Hello all. In today's session of parallel programming, we will be moving on to the next topic uh, where we will be seeing two basic operations which can be computed parallelly. One is a prefix sum, the other one is compact and split operations. When we go for the first basic operation prefix sum, we have already covered in unit one where it has two types of operations internally. One is inclusive scan, the other is exclusive scan. In inclusive scan, uh, you'll be provided with a list of elements and the prefix sum of inclusive scan will perform the summation of the elements. So including the first element. So first element will be taken as as it is. And when you go for your second element, it is the summation of previous two elements. That is the reason we call this as prefix. Now, when I go for this particular element as the output, I need to sum up all the elements starting from that location to the starting location. So you perform the operations and all the elements. And when I go for 21, it is the summation of all the values, including that particular element. So you are including the starting element also when you are performing your summation operation. Whereas when I go for exclusive scan operation in exclusive scan operation, you will be excluding the first element. So excluding that particular element, you perform your summation. So if these are the values which are being provided to you. If I want to perform the summation, I'll not include this element. So it would be zero and the next summation would be one. So you'll not be including the element at the current position. So if I want to perform the summation at this location, I'll only perform the previous two elements. It is three. So this would be six and this would be 10 and this is 15. So nowhere I'm including the last element in the summing up the values. So in inclusive scan, including the element present at that particular location and all the previous elements will be summed up. So this is about your prefix sum operation uh, where it is basically divided into inclusive and exclusive scan. Now coming to your inclusive scan, if you want to implement this operation parallelly, uh, we have to design an algorithm, right? So whatever operation I told you previously, it is manual calculation. So when you want to do it uh, parallelly by using multiple codes, this is the procedure. Uh, you will be given the set of values. So these are the set of values which are provided at first step. So where we call it as tried one, you will not perform any operation on the first element. The first element will be taken as it is into your second iteration. And from the second element onwards, when you see the adjacent elements are being summed up 3 plus 1, 4, 1 plus 7, 8. So the adjacent summation will be done at the first iteration. And when I'm going for stride two or the second iteration, you will be copying as it is. You will be start adding the elements from the third location onwards. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for this adder, the other input will be starting from your first location, first, second and third. And coming to your next iteration, the first four elements would be left as it is. And you perform the addition on the remaining four elements where the one input the, will be the present values as it is and the remaining input will be starting from the starting location. When you see this tried one, two and four, they are in the powers of two, two power zero, two power one and two square. So here you are leaving the first element here. You are leaving first two elements and here you are going for leaving four elements and then you perform the summation. So this is the actual procedure. And if you could see these many codes are being involved in iteration of first iteration. And this is at your second iteration. This is your third iteration. So the number of codes are being executed parallelly and you will be getting the result here. So if you want to cross check whether this operation is performed perfectly or not, you we go for manually calculating. So in a inclusive scan three and three, three plus one would be four, three, one, seven would be 11. So you can manually check out whether the result of it is uh, perfect or not. Now, when we move on to your exclusive scan, in exclusive scan, we basically go for performing two operations. One, we call it as up sweep or a reduced phase. The other, we call it as down sweep. First, we'll perform the up sweep operation on the given elements and Whatever output you get out of this up sweep will be provided as input to your down sweep operation. So in up sweep, you provide the list of elements. And if you could see the adjacent elements are being summed up. So these two elements, these two elements, and when you are summing up, the result is stored in the second location. So if I'm adding up zero and one, my result is stored in first position. If you are adding two and three, your result is stored in third position and the remaining locations are being filled up as it is of your previous value. And when you move on further, 
you have to add the perform the operations between here you are performing the operation between adjacent values now you'll be going for performing the operation between 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 so this is your second location this is your fourth location this is your sixth location and your eighth location and finally you perform your operation with fourth location and eighth location and obviously the result will be stored in eighth location here so you get an output of your up sweep that will be provided as input to your down sweep so this output is provided as input to this and coming to your down sweep operation you start performing the operation from top to down whereas in up sweep we go for performing the operation from bottom to up now in this after you get the output of your up sweep operation the last element would be replaced with zero once you replace your last element with zero you perform your operation so you repeat the operations so you were performing the operations on four and eight so you start performing the same operations on fourth element as well as your eighth element and if you could see here wherever you have two arrows joining at a particular location it means that you are summing it up so fourth element and eighth element will be summed up and you store the result and after storing the result whatever you have in your eighth location this dotted line indicates that you are just transferring this zero value to your fourth location and when you are moving down to the next iteration which elements are to be included in your operation two four six and eight so 2 and 4 will be summed up and the result will be stored in fourth location and whatever you have in your fourth location will be moved on to your second location. Similarly, when I am performing the operation on sixth and eighth elements, the addition uh, value will be stored in your eighth location and eighth element will be swapped onto your sixth location. And finally, when you are moving up to the next level or coming down to the next level of iteration, you perform the operations, addition operation as well as swapping operation. So when you go for down sweep operation, you have to perform two operations. One is your summation, the other is swap of the data. You have to just move. So in the process of moving the elements, the last zero which was inserted at the starting would be coming into the first location because in exclusive scan, I'm not going to include the starting element in my addition process. So this is the process which we'll be using for exclusive scan. So when you want to write a parallel programming techniques for it, uh, you have to use the basic uh, memory transfers, mem copy for transferring the data from host to device. And you need to go, go for using CUDA malloc functions where you allocate the memory for your device data. And once this basic operations are being included in your main method, you have to just write a kernel method which will perform the operations of your inclusive and your exclusive scan. The next operation which we'll be dealing in today's class is about your compact and split operation. Now, let me first tell you about compact operation. So in compact operation, you will be given a set of elements as your input and you have to produce an output and that output will be produced based on some conditions that conditions can be uh, you have to either remove zeros or you have to either eliminate uh, negative values so you are eliminating some of the values from your input and the left out values or remaining values will be produced as your output so for this operation to be done the steps that are required are you will be given a set of values. Now you have to perform a predicate function. Predicate is you produce a value one if the condition is met, otherwise you reflect it with zero. So here I want only positive value. So I'll check 0 0.4. So it, since it is a positive value, I'll reflect the next cell with one and minus 0 0.2 is a negative value. So you reflect it with zero. So once your predicate values are updated with ones and zero, if the condition is satisfied or true, you produce one. And if your condition is false, you produce a value zero. And once this operation is done, then you go for performing prefix sum operation. So when you, when I perform a prefix sum operation here, one will be produced as one. One plus zero would be one. One zero one will be two. You perform your summation on the remaining elements. Once you are performing the operation, you have to produce the address. So wherever you have a repetitive values, you don't go for storing the address. So the first address I'll start with zero. And since one is again repeating in the next location, I'll not give any address. Then I'll find out the next value, it is two. So my address value will be incremented by one. And since here, here I have again two, I'll not increment my address value. 
So since there is a change in my address value, my address will be incremented to 2. This would be 3. And since 4 and 4 are repeated in the next cells, you will not produce anything. And the last address value will be 4. So when you have this value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, eliminating the locations wherever you have written as 0, the remaining value 0 0.4 will be stored in address uh, 0 and 0 0.5 will be stored in address 1. 0 0.2 will be stored in address 2, 0 0.8 will be stored in address 3 and the last 0 0.1 will be stored in address 4. So this is, way, uh, this is how you go for making compact operation where you are reducing the size of the input. So when you see the size of the input and the size of the output, it is in compact size when compared to your input. So this is your compact operation. We have some other operation in this where we have split operation. In split operation, the given elements will be scattered, right? So you perform a scatter operation based on some condition where your array can be divided into two parts or the unused values can be replaced with zeros. Now for that, we take the same predicate value, whatever we are using for compact. We perform a prefix sum operation and you produce the address as it is. So as, as you are producing the address values, just to reflect the locations. Once you are reflecting the locations, see here. At 08th location, you store 0 0.4. And here, since you have an empty address here, you will be just replacing it with 0, 0.0. And when you have one here, store 0 0.5. This value will be reflected with 0. And when you have a location 2, 0 0.2 will be stored. In location 3, 0 0.8 and 0 0.1 will be stored in location 4 and remaining all other locations will be stored with 0, 0.0. Now, if you, if you want, you can divide this array into two parts where one array would be containing only 0 values. The other array will be containing all the values which are uh, greater than 0. So, so, this is one of the operation. So, since we have seen a theoretical part of your compact and split operation, we can go for performing a kernel. We can write a kernel functions where it performs the same. So you have to be very much clear about what are the steps that are to be provided. So input array is required and the output is also an array. And in between, we have to perform a prefix sum operation. You have to understand what are the addresses or you either reduce the size of the array or you go for splitting the array. So this is how we perform the split operations. In the next class, we'll be moving on to the next two operations.